Welcome back to a new video about current mirrors using MOSFETs. In this example we will use the P-channel MOSFET for the simple current mirror configuration. And this is our example number 5 and we will work out the calculations step by step and also verify these in SPICE simulations. So let's look at our circuit. We have in this case again two MOSFETs, in this case P-channel. So this P-channel but still enhancement mode. And we have the simple current mirror configuration we have discussed also in example number one. In this case we have the VSS which is 10 volts, that's only DC volt source here. And the M1 and M2 are again matched so they have the exact same physical dimensions. And also the channel length modulation is zero. The conduction parameter for both transistors KP is 50 milliamps per square volts. And the threshold voltages, V threshold is minus one volt for each transistor. What we want is a design, again a design uh, problem here for a load current which is ID2 here which is the drain current of the M2 of 8 milliamps. So let's see what we need to do and again this is a similar problem and similar analysis as in a quick, uh, example number one but now we use the p-channel MOSFETs. So the solutions, we perform me one with a calculation, we designate the nodes X and Y, just handy for our future calculations. So we start with the VGS1 is equal to VGS, I mean VSG1 is equal to VSG2, for recognizing these are parallel for this circuit. And that means that the drain current for both transistors will be the same. So we just designate them as VSG. Remember, we set an N-channel transistors VGS. For the P-channel transistor, we, uh, we use the VSG. So the Kirchhoff voltage law from for the circuit going from top to the ground is VSS plus this VSG1 or VSG2, but that's of course VSG, plus this uh, voltage across resistor R. So the complete thing is actually here. And the Ohm's law will give us the voltage across the resistor R, which is an R times I reference. Now the assumption here we will use is a saturation region of operation for the drain currents. Then for that we need to fulfill these two conditions for the P-channel MOSFET. So the VSG must be at least in the absolute sense larger than the threshold voltage. And the VSD, that is the between the source and drain, must be larger or equal to the VSG plus a threshold voltage. So we will check this later. Now, the drain current ID2, which is the load current, is given then for the speed channel transistor given by this one. So the KP is the conduction parameter again, and this is the formula we need to use. Now, when we rewrite this, so you divide the KP left and right, and then you get this expression, and now you take the square root, then you get two solutions, plus or minus. And you have this one and you now express the VSG in terms of the other parameters, you get this. Now, when you now substitute the values here, we have ID2 of 8 milliamps and we have 50 milliamps per square volts here for the KP. And the minus V threshold will be then plus 1 here. So, the two solutions will be then, when you work it out, 1.4 volts and 0.6 volts. Now, this is larger than... 1 volt, which is the absolute value of the threshold, which is then a valid solution according to this assumption, the saturation region condition. And the other one is 0 0.6, smaller than 1 volt, so that is definitely not valid. So mathematically, we will have two solutions, but only one solution is valid and also available in our circuit. So we will use VSG of 1.4 volts. Okay, now that means assumption is correct of course you can say we haven't checked the second condition that's true but that is already automatically checked but it says VSD must be larger than VSG plus a threshold now VSD is shown here that must be larger than in this case 1.4 minus 1 which is then 0 0.4 but that is definitely the case because if you go from this node to this node it's the same as from going this node to that node because in this case, the VSG is the exact same as VSD. So this second condition is always met for this circuit configuration. 
Now, going on, we know that I ref is equal to this current is equal to I D1. Why? Because the gate currents are zero for the MOSFETs, because it considers this as an open circuit for, uh, let's say, the capacitor. Now, that means also that this is equal to I D2. We have discussed because the VSG1 and VSG2 are exact same. So the drain currents are exact same according to this formula. Then we can write the following. We can say using the Kirchhoff's voltage law here from the first expression here, the equation here, we can now express R is equal to VSS minus the VSG over the reference current. So that's just the resistor here. Okay, now we have 10 volts given. We have 1.4 volts we just calculated for our VSG. And we need I reference, which is also the load current of 8 milliamps. So when you now do the calculation, you get 1,075 ohms, exactly. So we need to use this in this circuit in order to get 8 milliamps here, which is the load current. In general, we will also need, for example, scaling up or scaling down our currents from the left to the right side. So for that, I would like to briefly discuss the general expression for that one. We can relate the ID2, which is our load current, to the reference current by using the complete expression for the drain current expression. In that sense, we also have the lambda. This is the complete expression when you use also the lambda. It could be that this is not zero. It can be also some other values. Now, we know they are matched. So we say the KP1 and KP2 are exact same. And when you rewrite this in a different form, then this is the KP in this case specifically for for example the first transistor and also the second transistor well we know that they are exact same so we can just divide it out so they are gone we also know that vsg2 and vsg1 are exact same and also the threshold so this is also gone so we can also divide it out and since it lambda is zero we can also say this part and this part is also gone so we have only one plus zero and one plus zero the only thing you have left here in the numerator and also the denominator is just the W over L, which is the width and the length ratio of this transistor. So in total, ID2 over IRF is the ratio of the W and L of the second transistor divided by the W and L ratio of the first transistor. This is actually the conclusion here. Okay. Now let's move on and look at the simulation results for this circuit and we know we have the R of 1075 ohms and that will then produce 8 milliamps according to our calculations. Now we have here our MOSFET, M1 and M2, these are P-channel. You see the ID1 is 8 milliamps, IRF is 8 milliamps and ID2 is 8 milliamps. And this is the resistor 1.075 kilo ohms as we have calculated. So this will definitely do the job as shown here. So we have verified our calculations. Right guys, this is our example number five about the simple current mirror using the P-channel MOSFETs in this case. And we have verified our calculations in the SPI simulations. And we have seen how we can determine the required resistor here after the determination of our reference current, which is in this case also equal to the load current since the gate currents are zero. If you have any questions about this example, please let me know in the comment section. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.